Hey everyone and welcome back to another episode of Cooking Con Amanda. It is Saturday night and I'm going to try something a little out of my wheelhouse, uh, making a flourless oatmeal bar. Um, so instead of flour, we're going to use chickpeas. So this just gives me an opportunity to use um, one of the new products that I received in my um, new consultant kit. As, long, as well as one of the products that I have loved and have had for a long, long time that has just recently come back um, available, and that is the brownie bar pan, as well as the thing that I'm so excited, which is the new um, Pampered Chef Mini Brownie Bites pan. So now you can get them um, either individually, um, or if you're like me and you already have the brownie pan, you can buy the brownie bites pan separately, which is what I've done. So I'm waiting on that to come. But I love this pan. This is good. I don't know if you saw my recipe for meatloaf. This you can make even more individual meatloafs that you could maybe freeze for the weeknights. Um, if you had to make meals for one um, or, you know, cook meals to just heat up on the go. But anyway, so we've got, um, tonight we're going to use that to make these oatmeal bars. So we've got that sprayed down with a little bit of Pam. Um, and have the oven heated up to 350. The um, pan itself is really non-stick, but this doesn't have a whole lot of fat. I'm um, using some peanut butter and some white chocolate chips, but not a whole lot of fat. The peanut butter um, is natural, so um, just doing that just as, as a precaution. But So we're going to go ahead and start. Again, like I said, I get to use my manual food processor, which is new to me. This is the first time I have actually ever even used it. I've not demoed this or tried this before. So this is going to come. Um, you're going to get four pieces. The one is the lid, and I'll show you. This is actually our handle, how we're going to process, um, and it locks in place. Um, there's that. This is the second piece. It's your blade. So be careful because these are sharp. Then you have your base, which is nice. It has um, non-stick on the bottom, so it'll help to not slide when you're actually using it. And then it also comes um, with a lid, which we won't use tonight, but it would be nice um, if you're making some type of salsa or something that you kind of wanted to sit um, overnight. Um, it's also nice because it comes with a three cup measure here on the side. So that's that. So I'm going to set the lid aside since we won't need that. Just carefully place my blade back in here. Um, you can see there's kind of a groove here on the bottom of the lid that's going to actually fit here into the groove of the top of your blade. So let me go to our food, actually food process. We'll just make sure that's aligned. Um, but so what we're going to do is go ahead and um, go through a lot of our ingredients and I'm just going to kind of tell you the ingredients and the products I'm using as we go. So um, first we're going to start off, like I said, this is flourless, so no flour. Rather than that, we're using chickpeas. So this is my large Pampered Chef silicone prep bowl. Um, and I had this prepped for a while, so I did um, was able to utilize the lid, which goes on very easily when you try to put it on properly. Um, and had these in the fridge. I pre-drained and um, rinsed them. So um, I have one can of, it says 15 to 16 ounces, but they come in 15.5 ounces, so 15 to 16 ounces. Um, we also need two eggs. So again, I'm going to use this prep bowl, which I've already dirtied up with my chickpeas, and crack my eggs one at a time into there to make sure I don't get any shell in my mix. All right, no shell. And of course, if I didn't do that, I would get shell all in the mix. So go ahead and pop that in the sink. And now what we're gonna do is just place our lid on, just make sure that we've got that um, lined up with the base. And now we're gonna unlock the top. Um, what you're gonna do is press down and pull back. And that's going to release your top. So that's going to allow us to chop. So I'm going to move some of these other ingredients out of the way. Just so you can see the quick chop. Um, and 
it works. So it's basically, it's like a manual food processor. That's actually what it is, it's a manual food processor. But we're just processing together the um, chickpeas and the eggs. And so um, we're going to go into the blended, but they're not actually going to be all the way smooth. So we definitely need to go a little more. I think I called this the quick chop um, earlier, but this is our manual food process. This is great for making like dips, salsas, um, you know, guacamole, anything like that. Let's take a look. Okay, we still got definitely some cool chickpeas in there, so I'm going to give it a couple more turns. Um, but also, it, really for anything that you would food process, I have an actual electric one that I do love, but it's way high up in the shelves and usually requires me to ask my husband for assistance. So, you know, this one's just a little more handy for everyday projects or if I'm just trying to make some salsas or a dip or something like that, um, you know, it allows me to store it. It's pretty small, um, so I can store it just right in my cabinet. First try. I think I'm going to give it a, cu a couple more uh, go arounds here. Good way to get a little bit of arm work out too. You know, just your cardio or your arm work out in while making some nutritious, flourless oatmeal bars. So these would be good. Um, I was thinking, you know, kind of end of summer, end of fall, but maybe for breakfast um, to pre freeze them individually. Take them out the night before in the fridge um, for, you know, maybe older kids on the go. They're cranberry and white chocolate, um, but also have a little bit of peanut butter in them. So, I do you know so I have some little kids in my family, actually, that are pretty adventurous. So, they may even like something like this, but um, also make a good dessert. Um, good help adoption. Okay, so we're going to go ahead... Take out our blade and just be careful to so put that directly right in the sink. And now what we're going to do is take this mixture, and I know some of you have seen this, but I'm just going to show it again. One of the reasons why I love Pamper Chef so much, um, these are my two small mix and scrapers. This one's 20 years old, this one is brand new with my consultant kit. Pair them side to side, pretty much identical, a little bit of uh, miscoloring on this one, but really, barely, hardly visible. Use it all the time, put it in the microwave or the dishwasher all the time. So, just want to share that again. But what I'm going to do is take the contents of my manual food processor, pour them into my small um, Pampered Chef batter bowl. And so, What's so great about this Pampered Chef mix and scraper is just that. You can use it to scrape the inside of your bowl um, as well as easily mix it. So, set aside our manual food processor. We're done with that for now. So, here we have our chickpea and egg mixture in the batter bowl. Um, what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead um, and we will be adding in the peanut butter. I'm using all natural peanut butter. And this is our Pampered Chef um, large measure roll. And what I love about this is exactly for this purpose. Using for peanut butter, you can see, um, and this, you know, basically the name says it all. It measures everything. You can do liquid and um, solids, especially, um, I really like it for solids like peanut butter or mayonnaise um, or something where you want to kind of get everything out, but it's kind of a pain to scrape it. So I've got my peanut butter measured, and what you're going to do is just push from the bottom. You can see it kind of pushes all of your ingredients to the top of the cup or the measuring cup, and then you just wipe them off and get everything out. And so it's pretty easy um, to do that. So there we have our peanut butter, um, and that was uh, half a cup. Um, I just use just the natural peanut butter. So I'm gonna go ahead and put that 
side. Um, next, we're going to go ahead and add a teaspoon of vanilla extract, and I'm using my Pampered Chef adjustable measuring spoon. So I'll add that. And now I'm going to need that again for my salt, so I'll save that. Okay, next thing I'm going to add is um, we have two-thirds of white chocolate chips, but divided. So I'm going to have them in my one cup um, Pampered Chef uh, prep bowl, the glass prep bowl. I'm going to use half of them now. I'll save the other half that we'll use later for our topping. So I'm going to set this aside for right now. Okay, next we're going to add in some quick cook oats. And so what I'm going to do is show you, so here's the same measuring cup that I used with the peanut butter. I'm just going to flip it up, and this is a way that you can measure liquid ingredients, but also you can measure dry ingredients. Um, in this case, something like oats where I don't really need to have it pushed out of the cup. It'd be easy um, to use that for that. So I'm going to do a half a cup of my oats. And make a mess from the process. Just add those in. So now we've got you know two measuring cups out of one. So you're saving on the cleanup there. I'll put these aside. Okay. We next we're gonna add in. We have some dried cranberries here. Um, this is a third of a cup dried cranberries. And then we're also going to add um, some brown sugar. I have a third of a cup of brown sugar. Again, this is the Pampered Chef Petite Measure All, um, pretty much the same as the large. This is just the Petite Easy Read. Um, so, again, just push it at the bottom. I was able to easily pack um, my brown sugar. Press this down, you know, to whatever you need. You can hold it. Pack your brown sugar in real good. Just hold it tight and you you know you can't press it down. But then when you need to get it out, it's real easy. Just pop it out. So got those ingredients in. Um, next we're gonna add in some baking soda. So using our same pamper chef adjustable measuring spoon, we are gonna use a half of a teaspoon. So just take a set of baking soda. That in, and then finally, we're going to use a quarter of a teaspoon. So, just that of our salt. So, there we measured four things with one spoon. Again, saving on the cleanup. Just going to get these eggs out of the way. They are way done. Now, we're just going to go ahead and mix together really well, combine all of our ingredients. Here's our brownie pan. And already pre-sprayed um, with some nonstick spray. Um, we do have a Pampered Chef um, kitchen spritzer that you can use. You can put your own oil in it, um, which is on my wish list. Pretty much everything from the wish list, but that is definitely on there. So then you can control what kind of oil you want to use spray down um, your pan for whatever application um, you need it for. So we've got these kind of combined together. So I'm going to set aside my mix and scrape um, for now. I'm going to use the scoop. This um, recipe calls for the medium scoop. I don't have that yet. I have the small scoop, medium scoop on the wish list. Um, so we're going to use the medium scoop. Start with one um, per brownie section here um, just to see how we're looking and then we can come back and kind of adjust if you need it. So the scoop is great. Um, I love it for cupcakes. Um, it's about perfect for making a batch of cupcakes, one of the small scoops. Probably the medium scoop would be actually absolutely perfect because um, normally I'll do one full small scoop and then come back and kind of top off each one a little bit so um but it works just fine um but it really does make it a lot easier um to fill things like that um, without making a mess all over the outside of your pan so what you want to do is um 
make sure you get all your ingredients kind of squished down in each one of your individual brownie sections. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and finish that. Um, I'll use the rest of this mix. So medium scoop probably would have worked out just about perfect. You can see I've got a little bit left. So I'm going to fill up the ones that need a little extra. Um, go ahead and pop that in the oven. Again, preheated at 350. Um, I'm going to go ahead and let those cook between 16 to 18 minutes. Um, just check to make sure with the wooden pick um, or the, the cake insert um, to make sure that they are cooked through. Um, and then I will be back. And then we will go ahead and go through the um, white drizzle topping and um, give them a taste. So thanks for uh, joining me. Stay with me. I'll be back. Thanks. 